Okay, here we go again, everybody. I know this has been a long series on probability, but my main goal is to end up talking about permutations and combinations. But first, another famous sign in my classroom, live life to the fullest in four dimensions, 4D. Do not waste time and space. I attributed that quote to Albert Einstein, one of my favorite scientists, because he often talked about time and space in his theories of relativity. And hence, the hair, if you see the resemblance. No, not quite? Okay, how about now? There you go. Okay. Permutations and combinations. Another word for permutations is arrangements. And order matters. So for example, let's say you had the three letters in the word car. If you rearrange them to get the word arc, that's considered to be a different arrangement than car. When it comes to combinations, these are considered to be the, the same. But for permutations, order matters. So how many permutations can we get of the word car? Well, there's three choices for the first letter, followed by two choices for the second letter, and then essentially no choice. You have to pick the third letter. So there are six possible arrangements using the letters in the word car. And I'm sure you can quickly write down the other ones. They may not spell words, but they're arrangements. Now let's consider the word number. Six letters, so if we figure out the total number of range of choosing all six letters, it's going to be six factorial, similar reasoning to this over here. But what if we only choose four of them, any, any particular four? Well, then it would be six times five times four times three. And in order to come up with the formula for permutations, think about it this way. Let's pretend that we did multiply by 2 times 1, and then we divided by 2 times 1. So we can write this as 6 factorial over 2 factorial. And that's how we come up with the formula for permutations. By the way, the symbols are either this or, quite commonly, that. Those are probably the two most common ones you're going to see. So if you have this number of letters in the word and you choose this number, it's going to turn out to be that. So I can write it like this. N factorial over N minus R factorial. So you're going to put that in brackets. That's the general formula. Now let's think about the word institution, if you count up the letters, there's 11 of them. But there's three I's, three T's, and two M's. So if I wanted to choose all of them, how many different arrangements are there? This is fundamentally different from number in car because of the letters that are the same. So generally it would be 11 factorial over 11 minus 11 factorial or 11 factorial over 0 factorial. By the way, that would indicate that 0 factorial is equal to 1 for consistency. Okay, but because those letters are the same, the number of permutations for the word institution would only be 11 factorial divided by, in the case of the i's, 3 factorial, because there's six ways to rearrange those, divided by another 3 factorial, because there's 3 t's, and divided by 2 factorial, because there's two n's. Of course, you don't need that factorial for two because two 
two times one is just two, but for completeness, we'll put it on there. So when those letters that are the same, you have to divide by that number factorial. And finally, let's consider five friends trying out for the five different positions on a basketball team out of a total of eight people that are trying out. So you got eight players, five friends who want to be on the team together, trying out for the five different positions, which on a basketball team, as you probably know, are point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. So let's say the friends can be any one of the five positions. We have to take that into account. So the probability that those five will be on the team together is five factorial, the number of ways those five can be chosen for the five positions, divided by the total number of players, which is um, 12, whoops, 8 factorial over <clears throat> 3 factorial, 8 over 8 minus 5. So that would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 over 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And from there on, the 3 would cancel out. So let's simplify this. We don't have to do the, all the calculations. The 5s cancel, the 4s cancel, the 6 cancel, the 3 and the 2. So the probability of the 5 players being together on the same team is only 1 out of 56. Good luck with that. Not likely to happen. All right, so there's an introduction to permutations. Use all these concepts when you're doing your homework. See you next time.